Level 6, Grade D, Fraction Calculations. Now, uh, fractions usually fills most people with dread, but um, they're not going away. It's always a part of maths, um, so you really just got to bite the bullet and start to figure it out if you're not very good at them. Now, adding fractions is actually, and subtracting fractions, is probably one of the hardest things to do, apart from dividing times in fractions, is much easier. Um, but we'll look at the adding and subtracting first. Adding and subtracting is all about finding equivalent fractions that um, you can then add. You can't add fifths and tenths, it doesn't work. So you've got to find fractions that are the same size, they have a common denominator. So we've got to think of the number that uh, fifths go into um, and tenths go into. Well it just so happens that if I double one fifth I get well I double the top and double the bottom to find an equivalent fraction. That is the same as two tenths. Now I've got seven tenths there, so I can then combine those. There, those can be combined to make nine tenths. Okay, so when I'm looking for um, things to work out, what I could do is I could write out a whole list of equivalent fractions. So if I'm looking at this one, four fifths take away three quarters. If I look at some equivalent fractions, if I'm not very good at trying to figure out what fractions go into each other, and quite often this is really just a test of your times table skills. So 4 fifths doubled is 8 tenths. Um, if I times the top and bottom by 3, I get 12 over 15. Times by 4, I get 16 over 20. 3 quarters, if I double the top and bottom, I get 6 over 8. Uh, triple the top and bottom, I get 9 over 12 times it again I get uh, 12 over 15 and again I would get 15 over 20. Now I could keep doing that until I find one that has the same denominator and I've made a mistake there that should be 16 and not 20. Okay, it does happen. Okay, um, so in, the, in these four fifths and three quarters um, I went to the point where they had um, the same denominator which is going to be 16 out of 20 and 15 out of 20. So what I'm actually doing here is changing the 4 fifths to 16 out of 20 and the 3 quarters to 15 out of 20 and 16 twentieths take away 15 twentieths leaves me with just the 1 twentieth. Okay, and that's, that's um, to find these what they're going to go into. Sometimes if you're not sure you can just multiply the 4 and the 5 together to get 20. That will always work. But if you go back to this one, if I multiply these two together, I get 50, which is quite much bigger than 10. Sometimes there are smaller ones, but if you're not sure, you can always go straight to the that uh, denominator when you multiply the two together. Now, multiplying fractions is much easier. When I'm multiplying by um, a fraction, um, whatever I'm multiplying by, I'm essentially times them by the top, times by the bottom, uh, dividing by the bottom. So. Uh, sometimes I would divide by the bottom and then times by the top. It doesn't actually matter which way around you do it. If this was, say, 6, I would divide by the bottom to get 2 and times by the top to make 4. But because it's 5 and 3 doesn't go into 5, I'm going to times by the top to get 10 and divide by the bottom gets 3. Um, another way of thinking about that is to put that as a fraction. When you've got two fractions to get multiply by each other, you just times the tops and times the bottoms. And you could find uh, that as a mixed number. 3 goes into 10 3 times with 1 left over. But essentially you've done the answer there with 10 over 3. Uh, multiplying when two fractions together, then just we can just times the top and times the bottom. Okay. Sometimes we could do a little bit of a shortcut if we can see something that goes into the top and the bottom. So I can cancel. It can save a bit of time in the long run. So 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 8 4 times and then I would have 1 times 3 which is 3 and 5 times 4 which is 20 which is what this cancels down to. That's in its simplest terms. Okay, some more complicated ones. Divisions um, cause a lot of problems but division is just like timesing um, except for we have to do a little trick which is to turn the fraction upside down. So we're doing this, we're changing this division into a multiplication. To change a, uh, a dividing by a fraction to a multiplying by a fraction, we just turn the fraction upside down. And now we've got a similar question that we had on the other page. So 5 times 4 is 20 divided by 3 and that would go um, 6 times with 2 left over, so 6 and 2 thirds. Uh, dividing a fraction by a fraction, we leave the first fraction. This is the bit we're interested in. Dividing by 2 thirds, 
we change that into times and by two thirds upside down which is 3 over 2 and then we can just times the top which is 12 and the bottom which is 10 and then we can cancel it divided by 2 in top and bottom to give us 6 over 5 which is 1 and 1 fifth now when we've got mixed numbers that causes a bit of issue it's much easier to deal with fractions when they're when they're improper or top heavy so if we change this into improper fractions so um, 1 and 4 fifths, 1 is 5 fifths and 4 fifths is 9 fifths and 2 and 1 third 2 is 6 thirds plus 1 is 7 thirds so we're going to do 9 fifths times by 7 thirds okay now I could go ahead and multiply the top and bottom and get 63 over 15 and then have to cancel it down but if I do the cancelling in, in the calculation it saves me a little bit of bother so if I cancel the 3 and the 9 there anything on the top can cancel with anything on the bottom in a multiplication so 3 times 7 is 21 and 5 times 1 is 5 now you could have gone on and just done 63 over 15 and then you would have had to divide the top and bottom by 3 to get 21 over 5 um, but if you do it here it's sometimes easy to spot the factors and 5 goes into 21 4 times with 1 left over so that's 4 and 1 fifth